Welcome to our 2022 Tracer 230 BHSLE. Starting right in your back bumper here. If you just reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of the bumper, you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's how we hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit cleaner. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're going to find the stabilizer jack. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while they're out camping. A couple of steps forward, you'll find your power inlet. As you pop that open, you get a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Press those in together. The little eighth turn will lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter, so if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Kind of straight up on the frame from there, you're going to find your sewer hose outlet. So you can kind of press on that, give it a turn, it'll pop on out of there. You see you've got the same two ears on it that your sewer hose had, it'll attach the same way. On the left you get a gray valve, on the right you get a black. Black valve is controlling your black tank, black tank is filled with your toilet, of course it's going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower, typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there, you get your exterior shower. So you'll get a key just like this guy here. You can stick it on into there and open her up. You get the three foot hose, the standard head, hot and cold water. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off where he gets inside. Once you're done, just locking it back down with the key. Straight up above that's your city water inlet. Water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Towards the front of the unit, we get your fresh water inlet. This cap here, you pop that out. Same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that fills up a fresh water tank. The drain for that tank, you can see we got going. Just open up that valve there, allows it to drain itself out. The two lines behind it are just low point drains. So you open those up, allows the water system to drain itself out. And then lastly, there's just a little vent in the back there. So once you see water starting to spit out of that, you know your fresh water tank is full. Cable inlet right here, coax cable plug into there, fires up at your TV location. And underneath that's a free and solar panel plug in. Plug your solar panel into there, charges your batteries. Storage compartment here, they get a clutch, holds it open for you. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of that water hose, you're going to find your park adapter. 30 amps are there, 15 to standard outlet. Around front of the unit, get your little service light here on the side. Just got a switch on the bottom there. This black box here has got your battery inside of it. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your 7 pin to your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. These knobs, if you loosen off and push back, you get access to your propane tanks for the video. Pull this right off, and then I can show you a changeover in the front here. You can see we're currently green, pointing off to this tank. So it's just letting us know we've got propane and we're running off of this tank. If it were to go red, it's letting you know you no longer have any propane. At that point, just flip over to this tank, run off of that one while you get the other one filled. In the front of the unit's a standard tongue jack. One way's up, other way's down. Other end of your storage compartment here. It's just straight open right all the way through. Leash latch, so if you've got the dog out with you, you can tie him down. Bottle opener right by your door here. GFI protected outlet, exhaust for your furnace beside it. If you're ever running a furnace, it does get hot, so just make sure it's not blocked off. Straight up from there is your two exterior speakers. They do have little blue lights inside of them as well. A little storage compartment back here. Right beside it's your hot water tank. So you can take that keyway there, you line it up and you pop it on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before we turn it on though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure you're getting that water coming out. If you're not getting any water out of there, there's a chance that it's empty. And you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just lock it back down with the keyway. And then to the back of the units here, you get your spare tire. Straight up from there, you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. So now we'll make our way inside of the units here. Your assist handle just up 90 degrees and will fall into place. Then you can open up your door. You're going to open that door up wide. And then we can grab this handle here, pull it straight on out, flip that last step over, make our way inside. So first things first, once you get in here, fire extinguisher is right on the left. That's standard. Pull the pin, point, and shoot. Straight up from there, you'll find your lights. One on the right there is going to do your speaker lights. One in the center is your awning light. And one on the left is your interior lights. Straight up above us, we've got your entry light here. So this is a dual function light. It's got a one there, so it's just on is on. And then it's got a two on the right side. That's a dual, that's a motion sensing. So at that point, if it senses a lack of motion for a minute, it'll turn itself off. Once it picks up motion, turn itself back on. Awning is on this switch here. Press and hold out and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, and there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. 
Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway. So what you're going to do is grab either arm, front or rear, just pull straight down on it. You can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm in front. Before you bring it back in though, you just make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then you can press and hold in, and that awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. There we go. Slide out switches right beside it. Press and hold out and the slide will make its way out. Once that side's fully extended, the motors will just kind of automatically stop themselves and they'll set, and set, they'll set themselves into place. There we go. So into the front bedroom here. The light switch is just right up on the wall here. Okay. Above my head's your antenna, so I'm just going to push that in, turn it around, looking for your best signal wherever you find it, you leave it there. Once you're going traveling again, you just want to follow this arrow, make sure you're fully rotated. Sliding doors, just have little travel latches in the back here. Just making sure that if you're traveling, that these guys are sat into place properly. Okay. There's also a TV backer back here, so you'd have a little bit of a standoff just to keep them separated from the doors there, and you have your TV outlet right up above it. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment. And right behind me here, you get your little closet space. In the head of the bed, it's a little light on either side. And then if we just run over to the other side of the bedroom here, get the identical closet space. Lines throughout the unit, just sit where you leave them. This red tab here, you'd pull that to get rid of the screen. Take the sandal here, throw it outside, hop on out. That's the emergency exit. Entertainment area, so your TV backer right there, power outlet for it, as well as your cable and satellite outlet for it, antenna outlet right in the bottom, turning that antenna on, just that little button there, you get that green light letting you know it is turned on. AV cables are hooked into the stereo, so you can kind of get your surround sound through that. And then on the left side here, you've got your thermostat, that's that power button there, and that'll turn it on. Cool, it's going to first, of course, turn on the air conditioner, select your fan speed here, just low, high, or auto. Temp selection just with your arrows there. With the air conditioner going, you got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air, or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this air as quickly as possible, then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. After cool, if you hit mode, it'll come down into heat. Again, you're just selecting your temperature with your arrows there. There's no fan speed here, it's just kind of on is on, and the furnace will be moving its air through all of your little portals that you have throughout the unit. Mode again after heat, come down into fan. You can select your high or low fan, which of course just moving some air around. After fan, it'll come down into dry. At this point, it'll run the compressor with the low fan, just trying to get rid of any humidity out of the unit. Turn it off, press and hold the power button. That'll turn it off. Up from there, get your smoke detector. Straight down the wall from there is your LP detector, propane severed in there, sits on the floor, that guy detects it, starts going off just like smoke detector would. For your stereo here, pretty straightforward, you get your power button there to turn it on, select to get through all your settings, mode through all your inlets, volume controls on the right side. Zone 1 is the sound bar itself, zone 2 is your outside set of speakers, a little bit of storage underneath it. Into the slide, there's a push button light right on the side there, you can see you've currently got it set up as the dinette. If you were to take your cable, wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will end, or sorry, the tabletop will end it onto these three ledges here. You'll take your back cushion as well as that filler piece there to create your bed. In the kitchen, you get your storage up top here. That's where you're going to find that binder. It's got all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, any keys, anything like that. You're going to find right in there. Right underneath it, you get a little light. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. A little bit of storage underneath it. Just be mindful of your drains and your water lines. You can also access this from the other side there. Drawer space. Microwave, pretty standard, just like home. Range vent underneath it as well. Bifold cover for your stove. You're just going to flip that on back. Take your knob over to the little flame. Get the igniter and she fires right up. 
Once you're done, just turning it back to off, letting it cool down, and then closing off the cover there. For the oven, you're going to flip it open, grab that knob there, turn it over that little flame, just hit that igniter, you can see that pilot light that's going. Once you have it going, you just hold the knob for another second, then you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up your desired temperature and she fries right up. Once you're done, you're just going to turn it back down to pilot and hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're going traveling, you want to make sure it's right off. The one there in that switch is for your knobs. Two is going to do the knobs as well as the oven. Underneath all that, you get your converter. Press the top and center, it'll pop on open. All of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And all of your fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. 12 volt fridge here. So as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Underneath, it's the return air for your furnace, just kind of making sure it's not blocked off. The two bunk spaces in the back here are both identical. You just get the little push button light in the side. Right. Doghouse storage underneath. And then in the bathroom here, you have those kind of dual function lights again. You get your medicine cabinets here. Underneath it, you'll find your monitor panel. Bottom right corner is your water pump switch. As you turn that on, it draws out a fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Battery, you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. The fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same would go for your black and your gray tanks. Little thunderbolt in the bottom left corner here, just lets you know you're firing it up with that uh, hot water tank with electricity. Flame on the right side, letting you know you're firing it up with propane. If this red light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Hot and cold water at the sink, kind of right around the corner from there is your GFI protected outlet. Test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Toilet just flips on open, you get your flusher front and center. And then in the shower, you get the nice stainless head and hose. Hot and cold water, of course. Straight up above our heads is your roof vent. You're just turning that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get the switch that turns on the fan. And then lastly, is just kind of your pantry space here. Simple as that. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.